Welcome back to History of Simple Things. Today's topic comes from one of our awesome viewers, Bradley Roberts. Huge thanks for the suggestion. You asked, how do transistors work? So today, we're diving into something that quite literally powers the modern world. But you almost never see it. It's in your phone, your computer, your car, your microwave, basically anything that uses electricity to think. I'm talking about the transistor, one of the most important inventions of the 20th century. We'll break down how it works, how it came to be, and how it evolved from something you could actually hold in your hand to something smaller than a virus. Let's dive in, right here, on History of Simple Things. So let's start with the basics. What even is a transistor? In the simplest terms, a transistor is a tiny electronic switch. It controls the flow of electricity, just like a faucet controls water. You can use it to turn electrical signals on or off or even to amplify them. That's why transistors are the building blocks of all modern electronics. Think of them as the neurons of your devices. They switch, amplify, and process the digital signals that make our technology work. Now, how does this little switch actually work? Most transistors today are made from silicon, which is a semiconductor. That means it doesn't conduct electricity as freely as metal, but it's not as insulating as rubber either. This in-between behavior is what makes silicon perfect for controlling current. The most common type is the MOSFET, short for Metal Oxide Semiconductor Field Effect Transistor. Don't worry about the long name, just remember it has three parts, the source, the drain, and the gate. Imagine a water pipe where the source is where the water comes in, the drain is where it goes out, and the gate is like a valve. When you apply a voltage to the gate, it opens the channel and lets current flow from source to drain. When the gate is off, the current stops. Simple, right? In digital circuits, we use this on-off behavior to represent binary ones and zeros. Thousands, millions, even billions of these on-off switches work together to do everything from loading a web page to playing a video game. The story of the transistor begins in 1947 at Bell Labs. Scientists John Bardeen, Walter Bretain, and William Shockley were trying to find a better alternative to the vacuum tubes that powered early electronics. Vacuum tubes were bulky, fragile, and they got hot, like really hot. Their breakthrough came in the form of the first working transistor, a crude looking contraption made of germanium and gold foil. It didn't look like much, but it worked. It could amplify electrical signals without the heat and fragility of a vacuum tube. This single moment quietly kicked off the information age. What's wild is how humble that first device was. If you saw it today, you'd probably mistake it for a failed science fair project. But that tiny prototype changed everything. In 1959, Jack Kilby and Robert Noyce independently developed what we now call the microchip, a compact slab of silicon that could hold multiple electronic components, including transistors. This changed the game entirely. Instead of wiring individual transistors together by hand, which was time-consuming and error-prone, engineers could now print entire circuits onto a chip. Suddenly, it was possible to pack thousands of transistors into a space smaller than your fingernail. This leap in efficiency brought us smaller, faster, and cheaper electronics. Personal computers, digital watches, calculators, video game consoles, all of these became possible thanks to integrated circuits powered by transistors. Fast forward to today, and we're operating at the nanoscale, 
literally billionths of a meter. Modern transistors are now just a few nanometers wide. To put that in perspective, a red blood cell is about 7,000 nanometers across. We're talking tiny. At this level, traditional physics starts to break down. Electrons can tunnel through barriers they're not supposed to. This is quantum mechanics messing with our tech. So engineers have had to get creative. New designs like FinFETs, which use a 3D fin-shaped structure and gate all around transistors are helping us maintain control over current at these tiny sizes. Companies like Intel, AMD, and TSMC are constantly pushing the boundaries of how small we can go while keeping performance high. So why does any of this matter? Because transistors are at the heart of progress. The number of transistors on a chip determines how powerful your phone is, how smart your AI assistant is, how fast your computer runs, and how advanced your medical devices can become. It's not just about gadgets. It's about access to information, solving complex problems, and even exploring space. Every jump in transistor technology brings us closer to solving real-world challenges, from climate modeling to genome sequencing. Looking ahead, it's clear that the transistor's journey is far from over. Whether we stick with silicon or move on to something entirely new, the idea behind the transistor, controlling the flow of information, isn't going anywhere. We're entering an era where AI, robotics, and biotech are becoming part of everyday life. And you can bet there will be trillions of transistors behind the scenes, making it all possible. It's kind of poetic, actually, from a grainy little hunk of germanium in 1947 to mind-blowingly small nano devices today, the transistor has quietly reshaped our entire world. So next time you pick up your phone or boot up your laptop, take a moment to appreciate the magic happening under the hood. It's all thanks to the humble transistor, one of the tiniest and most transformative inventions in human history. Thank you for watching. If you have suggestions for our next video, feel free to share them in the comments below. We'll be sure to give you an acknowledgement for your contribution. Thank you for joining us on this journey through the history of simple things. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and stay tuned for more stories woven through the smallest details.